offering deep and novel understanding of living systems, the new biology is already revolutionizing healthcare. And that includes the costliest group of illnesses, cancer. To be diagnosed with cancer is difficult. To be diagnosed with multiple myeloma, an orphan cancer that's uniformly fatal is beyond challenging. And then to find out that you have one of the highest risk forms of myeloma is devastating. Kathy Giusti was a 37-year-old pharmaceutical company executive when she was told she had only a few years to live. My daughter was only one. My greatest hope was that maybe I would see her attend kindergarten. It's not necessarily the thing you want to hear. A very harried doctor tells you you've got kidney cancer. It doesn't look like it's spread very far yet, um, but uh, I'm gonna call urology. I'm sorry, I have to go. Stanford University immunologist Gary Nolan had heard this kind of news before. I've had five incidences of distinct uh, and unique cancers. My twin sister has a very healthy immune system. So after receiving high dose chemotherapy, I ended up doing a stem cell transplant with her. Should I lose my fight with a disease, she's right here to help with my family. I just got a CT scan yesterday. The radiologist said there was nothing, no evidence uh, anywhere that it had spread. It is taking care of things early, quick action, which is, I think, what uh, some of the network biology that we're going to be able to do in the near future is going to enable. The field of cancer research has had a long history of taking a very reductionist view of the problem, thinking about just the cancer cell, not the genetic networks that surround the offending oncogene. In sickness and in health, genes, proteins, and metabolites are highly interconnected, like the strands of a spider web. There's no place on a spider web that you can pull an element of the web, and it isn't felt somewhere else. Nolan is teasing out the networks underlying cancers of the immune system. We're not just looking at T cells in isolation and what they are capable of doing, but saying when T cells do this, at a distance, B cells, macrophages, dendritic cells are compensating like a great machine. Treatments like X cell, right? We now are using a variety of techniques to determine the different kinds of networks that exist within each cell and then within the interlocking system of the cells as they talk to each other. Nolan uses flow cytometry, a technique for rapidly examining cells one by one. By increasing the number of molecules he can detect, Nolan offers an exponential explosion in the number of cell states that he can measure. We can measure 35, 50, soon 100 parameters on a per cell basis. It lets us look at heterogeneity at a more granular level. It lets us describe uh, all the multiple cell subpopulations and dynamic states that are occurring at any given point in time. It gives us quantitative information that allows us to bring powerful statistics to bear. I can ask millions of questions at a time, not just one question at a time. Because Nolan can detect exponentially more cell types, the number of molecular networks that he can consider shoots up super exponentially. In this new technology, Nolan tags an antibody with one of a large number of isotopes. Each antibody attaches to a unique protein on or in a cell. A cell is shot into a flame hotter than the surface of the sun. The cell becomes a plasma. As the spectrometer identifies the ions, Nolan gets a gigabyte of raw data per minute, which tell him which of dozens of proteins are in each cell, uniquely identifying different cell types. Nolan applied this new technology to acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, a cancer of one line of blood cells. He zeroed in on one lineage of blood stem cells. 
These would be cells uh, that represent the tumor as they come right out of the blood of the patient. Nolan now activated these cells with a molecule that triggers a strong immune response, the context of most cancers. Now, when he ran the cells through the mass spectrometer, he discovered that what had looked like one group of cell types was actually two. The green cells are far more numerous in early stages of AML and can be killed by chemotherapy. The blue cells are another story. The grandparents of a blood cell lineage, the blue cells resist chemotherapy and come back to kill the patient. We now know that every patient comes in the door with two cancers and therefore should be getting two therapies. Never before have distinct stages of a cancer been found that show up at the beginning and end of differentiation. Mutations in a grandparent cell derail its journey down the family tree. The signaling networks within them that are supposed to go from one cell state, they go through a rapid set of changes, and then they reassemble like an origami. If you fold them a different way, they become something different. While Nolan is working at the level of cells, another investigator wants to understand cancer at the level of networks of molecules. Andrea Califano is trying to represent in predictive network models the millions of interactions among proteins, DNA, and other molecules. The challenge is that by the time cancer is detected, a cascade of molecular changes has swept through the body. The most important thing in a biological system is who regulates, who is totally upstream of that process. The single pebble that's sliding down the mountain causes the avalanche. The view of biology that we've had for many years is of observing the result of the avalanche. We use a, an approach that is really fundamentally based on our ability to characterize the targets of major regulators in bulk. So instead of saying these are the 10 targets of that transcription factor, we have to say these are the 1,000 targets of that transcription factor. This has never been possible before. In Califano's models, nodes represent gene expression traits, and links between them represent regulatory relationships. Califano can use this map to narrow his search for the causes of disease. Right now, using these models, we are really able to pinpoint within a very small number of candidates, you know, in the order of less than 10, what was the gene that you had actually perturbed. It requires tremendous computer power. But at the same time, it allows us to go back to these master regulators of disease. Califano's model also lets him predict the efficacy of drugs. We bring those predictions to the lab in a highly roboticized environment where literally hundreds of thousands of experiments can be performed in, in a week. And these experiments can involve silencing genes or gene combination. Califano's lab can help identify drugs that precisely target the dysregulated networks in cancer, and that's a big step beyond current treatments. The majority of tumor treatments today are basically just cytotoxic. You're just killing the cell indiscriminately. To a large extent, it's like shooting with a, with a hand grenade into the body. Any individual cancer treatment will work in anywhere from 50% of the patients down to as few as 5%. We've actually cured cancer. We just don't know who to give the drugs to. At the Broad Institute at MIT and Harvard, one researcher is trying to help get the right drug to the right cancer patient. Todd Golub doses cells with an array of pharmaceuticals and other small molecules. He then projects this data into existing network models. For each of the 20,000 or so human genes, Golub's connectivity map shows whether expression goes up or down after exposure to each of over 7,000 drugs or small molecules. Golub is exploring the interaction of macrophages, white blood cells, and cancer cells in a tumor. It turns out that there are different types of macrophages, some that promote the growth of tumor cells and some that actually repress the growth. For the first time, we're going to look at what the signature looks like in the connectivity map database. I haven't looked at this before. I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen or whether it's going to be useful, but we'll see. And we're going to execute the query. 
Golub is asking the connectivity map to look for drugs that will change the gene expression of the bad macrophages into that of the good ones. There it is, so it's done. So here we actually have quite a very strong result where we have a very strong connectivity with a number of drugs. And one striking thing that we can see just looking at this is that there are a number of histone deacetylase inhibitors on this list. For example, varinostat was recently approved by the FDA. As far as I know, a role in the differentiation of macrophages hasn't been suspected. I have no idea whether this is going to actually work or not, but it suggests an experiment that we never could have thought of before. Another of Golub's projects is a study of the complete genome of a cancer of blood plasma cells, multiple myeloma. This is Kathy Giusti's illness. Giusti, with her twin sister, started the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation, which has collaborated with Golub on his research on the topic. The early returns on this myeloma genome project suggest that there are whole aspects of biology that are entirely new, not only to multiple myeloma, but to cancer biology in general. And the more we understand the multitude of pathways affected, the more we will find the right drugs and combinations of drugs to cure this disease. I had a certain translocation that made me high risk. It was hard for me to live with that for a while because there was no drug to help me. But today, because we know that that translocation is found in about 15% of myeloma patients, the drug companies have started developing drugs, antibodies in that field. Juisti's foundation has helped get four new drugs approved for multiple myeloma. With these treatments, a patient's life expectancy from diagnosis has doubled to seven years. Juisti herself is an outlier. She's already survived 14 years. Now I live year by year. I never believe I'll have more than a year, but I live in that year, and I am grateful for every single milestone I see. Whether it's having seen my children's first steps to their first touchdown, their first home run, their first homecoming game. Where we are now is looking at the next generation of drugs, which we have many in our pipeline, but again, I still believe that cures will come from combining those drugs with the genomic information and deciding who can be cured and with what.